Pope Sylvester II or Sylvester II c. 946 May 1003 was Pope from 2 April 999 to his death in 1003. Originally known as Gerbert of Aurillac Latin, Gerbertus Aureliacensis or de Aurillac, French, Gerbert d'Aurillac, he was a prolific scholar and teacher. He endorsed and promoted study of Arab and Greco-Roman arithmetic, mathematics, and astronomy, reintroducing to Europe the abacus and armillary sphere, which had been lost to Latin though not Byzantine Europe since the end of the Greco-Roman era. He is said to be the first to introduce in Europe the decimal numeral system using Arabic numerals. He was the first French pope. Topic. Life Topic. Gerbert was born about 946 in the town of Belliac, near the present-day commune of Saint-Simon, Cantal, France. Around 963, he entered the monastery of Saint-Gerald of Aurillac. In 967, Borel II, Count of Barcelona 947 visited the monastery, and the abbot asked the count to take Gerbert with him so that the lad could study mathematics in Catalonia and acquire there some knowledge of Arabic learning. In the following years, Gerbert studied under the direction of Addo, Bishop of Vic, some 60 km north of Barcelona, and probably also at the nearby monastery of Santa Maria de Ripoll. Neither place was under Islamic rule at the time. Borel II of Barcelona was facing major defeat from the Andalusian powers so he sent a delegation to Córdoba to request a truce. Bishop Addo was part of the delegation that met with Al-Hakam II of Córdoba, who received him with honor. Gerbert was fascinated by the stories of the Mozarab Christian bishops and judges who dressed and talked like the Arabs, well versed in mathematics and natural sciences like the great teachers of the Islamic madrasas. This sparked Gerbert's veneration for the Arabs and his passion for mathematics and astronomy. In 969, Count Borel II made a pilgrimage to Rome, taking Gerbert with him. There Gerbert met Pope John XIII 965 and the Emperor Otto I, nicknamed the Great 936 the Pope persuaded Otto I to employ Gerbert as a tutor for his young son, the future Emperor Otto II 973 Some years later, Otto I gave Gerbert leave to study at the Cathedral School of Reims where he was soon appointed a teacher by Archbishop Adelberin. When Otto II became Holy Roman Emperor in 973 he was co-emperor with Otto I from 967, he appointed Gerbert the abbot of the monastery of Bobbio and also appointed him as count of the district, but the abbey had been ruined by previous abbots, and Gerbert soon returned to Reims. After the death of Otto II in 983, Gerbert became involved in the politics of his time. In 985, with the support of his archbishop, he opposed Lothair of France's attempt to take the Lorraine from Emperor Otto III by supporting Hugh Capet. Hugh became King of France, ending the Carolingian line of kings in 987. Adelberon died on 23 January 989. Gerbert was a natural candidate for his succession, but Hugh Capet appointed Arnulf, an illegitimate son of Lothair instead. Arnulf was deposed in 991 for alleged treason against the king, and Gerbert was elected his successor. There was so much opposition to Gerbert's elevation to the See of Reims, however, that Pope John XV sent a legate to France who temporarily suspended Gerbert from his episcopal office. Gerbert sought to show that this decree was unlawful, but a further synod in 995 declared Arnulf deposition invalid. Gerbert now became the teacher of Otto III, and Pope Gregory V 996 Otto III's cousin, appointed him Archbishop of Ravenna in 998. With the Emperor's support, he was elected to succeed Gregory V as Pope in 999. Gerbert took the name of Sylvester II, alluding to Pope Sylvester I 314 the advisor to Emperor Constantine I Soon after he was elected Pope, Sylvester II confirmed the position of his former rival Arnulf as Archbishop of Reims. As Pope, he took energetic measures against the widespread practices of simony and concubinage among the clergy, maintaining that only capable men of spotless lives should be allowed to become bishops. 
In 1001, the Roman populace revolted against the emperor, forcing Otto III and Sylvester II to flee to Ravenna. Otto III led two unsuccessful expeditions to regain control of the city and died on a third expedition in 1002. Sylvester II returned to Rome soon after the emperor's death, although the rebellious nobility remained in power, and died a little later. Sylvester is buried in St. John Lateran. Legend the legend of Gerbert grows from the work of the English monk William of Malmesbury in De Rebus Gestis Regum Anglorum and a polemical pamphlet, Gesta Romanae Ecclesia contra Hildebrandum, by Cardinal Baino, a partisan of Emperor Henry IV who opposed Pope Gregory VII in the investiture controversy. According to the legend, Gerbert, while studying mathematics and astrology in the Muslim cities of Cordoba and Seville, was accused of having learned sorcery. Gerbert was supposed to be in possession of a book of spells stolen from an Arab philosopher in Spain. Gerbert fled, pursued by the victim, who could trace the thief by the stars, but Gerbert was aware of the pursuit, and hid hanging from a wooden bridge, where, suspended between heaven and earth, he was invisible to the magician. Gerbert was supposed to have built a brazen head. This robotic head would answer his questions with yes or no. He was also reputed to have had a pact with a female demon called Meridiana, who had appeared after he had been rejected by his earthly love, and with whose help he managed to ascend to the papal throne. Another legend tells that he won the papacy playing dice with the devil. According to the legend, Meridiana or the bronze head told Gerbert that if he should ever read a mass in Jerusalem, the devil would come for him. Gerbert then cancelled a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, but when he read mass in the church Santa Croce in Jerusalem, Holy Cross of Jerusalem. In Rome, he became sick soon afterwards and, dying, he asked his cardinals to cut up his body and scatter it across the city. In another version, he was even attacked by the devil while he was reading the Mass, and the devil mutilated him and gave his gouged-out eyes to demons to play with in the church. Repenting, Sylvester II then cut off his hand and his tongue. The inscription on Gerbert S tomb reads in part Isti locus silvestris membra sepulti venturo domino conferit ad sonatum this place will yield to the sound of the last trumpet the limbs of buried Sylvester II, at the advent of the Lord, Ms. Red as will make a sound and has given rise to the curious legend that his bones will rattle in that tomb just before the death of a pope, the alleged story of the crown and papal legate authority given to Stephen I of Hungary by Sylvester in the year 1000 hence the title, Apostolic King, is noted by the 19th-century historian Louis L. Croft as a possible forgery of the 17th century. Likewise, the 20th-century historian Zoltan J. Kostolnik states that it seems more than unlikely that Rome would have acted in fulfilling Stephen's request for a crown without the support and approval of the emperor. Legacy Gerbert of Aurillac was a humanist long before the Renaissance. He read Virgil, Cicero and Boethius, he studied Latin translations of Porphyry, but also of Aristotle. He had a very accurate classification of the different disciplines of philosophy. In 967, he went to Catalonia to visit the Count of Barcelona, and remained three years in the Monastery of Vic, in Catalonia which, like all Catalans' monasteries, contained manuscripts from the Muslim Spain and especially from Córdoba, one of the intellectual centers of Europe at that time. The library of Al-Hakam II, for example, had thousands of books from science to Greek philosophy. This is where he was introduced to mathematics and astronomy. Gerbert was said to be one of the most noted scientists of his time. Gerbert wrote a series of works dealing with matters of the quadrivium arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, music, which he taught using the basis of the trivium grammar, logic, and rhetoric. In Reims, he constructed a hydraulic-powered organ with brass pipes that excelled all previously known instruments, where the air had to be pumped manually. In a letter of 984, Gerbert asks Lupidus of Barcelona for a book on astrology and astronomy, two terms historian S. Jim Tester says Gerbert used synonymously. Gerbert may have been the author of a description of the astrolabe that was edited by Hermanus Contractus some fifty years later. Besides these, as Sylvester II he wrote a dogmatic treatise, De Corpore et Sanguin Domini, on the body and blood of the Lord. 
Abacus and Hindu Arabic numerals. Gerbert learned of Hindu Arabic digits and applied this knowledge to the abacus, but probably without the numeral zero. According to the 12th century historian William of Malmesbury, Gerbert got the idea of the computing device of the abacus from a Spanish Arab. The abacus that Gerbert reintroduced into Europe had its length divided into 27 parts with nine number symbols this would exclude zero, which was represented by an empty column and 1,000 characters in all, crafted out of animal horn by a shieldmaker of Reims. According to his pupil Richer, Gerbert could perform speedy calculations with his abacus that were extremely difficult for people in his day to think through in using only Roman numerals. Due to Gerbert's reintroduction, the abacus became widely used in Europe once again during the 11th century. <laughs> Armillary sphere and sighting tube Although lost to Europe since the terminus of the Greco-Roman era, Gerbert reintroduced the astronomical armillary sphere to Latin Europe via the Islamic civilization of Al-Andalus, which was at that time at the cutting edge of civilization. The details of Gerbert's armillary sphere are revealed in letters from Gerbert to his former student and monk Remy of Treves and to his colleague Constantine, the abbot of Mycenae, as well as the accounts of his former student and French nobleman Richer, who served as a monk in Reims. Richer stated that Gerbert discovered that stars coursed in an oblique direction across the night sky. Richer described Gerbert S use of the armillary sphere as a visual aid for teaching mathematics and astronomy in the classroom, as well as how Gerbert organized the rings and markings on his device. First, Gerbert demonstrated the form of the world by a plain wooden sphere, thus expressing a very big thing by a little model. Slanting this sphere by its two poles on the horizon, he showed the northern constellations toward the upper pole and the southern toward the lower pole. He kept this position straight using a circle that the Greeks called horizon, the Latins limitans, because it divides visible stars from those that are not visible. On this horizon line, placed so as to demonstrate practically and plausibly the rising and setting of the stars, he traced natural outlines to give a greater appearance of reality to the constellations. He divided a sphere in half, letting the tube represent the diameter, the one end representing the north pole, the other the south pole. Then he divided the semicircle from one pole to the other into thirty parts. Six lines drawn from the pole he drew a heavy ring to represent the arctic polar circle. Five divisions below this he placed another line to represent the tropic of Cancer. Four parts lower he drew a line for the equinoctial circle the equator. The remaining distance to the south pole is divided by the same dimensions. Given this account, historian Oscar G. Darlington asserts that Gerbert S division by 60 degrees instead of 360 allowed the lateral lines of his sphere to equal to 6 degrees. By this account, the polar circle on Gerbert's sphere was located at 54 degrees, several degrees off from the actual 66 degrees 33. His positioning of the Tropic of Cancer at 24 degree was nearly exact, while his positioning of the equator was correct by definition. Richer also revealed how Gerbert made the planets more easily observable in his armillary sphere. He succeeded equally in showing the paths of the planets when they come near or withdraw from the Earth. He fashioned first an armillary sphere. He joined the two circles called by the Greeks colary and by the Latins incidentes because they fell upon each other, and at their extremities he placed the poles. He drew with great art and accuracy, across the colours, five other circles called parallels, which, from one pole to the other, divided the half of the sphere into thirty parts. He put six of these thirty parts of the half-sphere between the pole and the first circle, five between the first and the second, from the second to the third, four, from the third to the fourth, four again, five from the fourth to the fifth, and from the fifth to the pole, six. On these five circles he placed obliquely the circles that the Greeks call loxos or zoe, the Latins obliques or vitalis the zodiac because it contained the figures of the animals ascribed to the planets. On the inside of this oblique circle he figured with an extraordinary art the orbits traversed by the planets, whose paths and heights he demonstrated perfectly to his pupils, as well as their respective distances. Richer wrote about another of Gerbert's last armillary spheres, which had sighting tubes fixed on the axis of the hollow sphere that could observe the constellations, the forms of which he hung on iron and copper wires. 
This armillary sphere was also described by Gerbert in a letter to his colleague Constantine. Gerbert instructed Constantine that, if doubtful of the position of the pole star, he should fix the sighting tube of the armillary sphere into position to view the star he suspected was it, and if the star did not move out of sight, it was thus the pole star. Furthermore, Gerbert instructed Constantine that the North Pole could be measured with the upper and lower sighting tubes, the Arctic Circle through another tube, the Tropic of Cancer through another tube, the Equator through another tube, and the Tropic of Capricorn through another tube. Works Gerbert's writings were printed in volume 139 of the Petrologia Latina. Darlington notes that Gerbert's preservation of his letters might have been an effort of his to compile them into a textbook for his pupils that would illustrate proper letter writing. His books on mathematics and astronomy were not research-oriented, his texts were primarily educational guides for his students. Mathematical writings libellus de numerorum division de geometria regula de abaco computi liber abasi libellus de rationali et ration uti ecclesiastical writings sermo de information episcoporum de corpore et sanguin domini selecta e concil. Basal, Remans, Massum, etc. Letters epistolae anti summum pontificatum scriptae 218 letters, including letters to the emperor, the pope, and various bishops epistolae et decreta pontificia 15 letters to various bishops, including Arnulf, and abbots 1 dubious letter to Otto III, 5 short poems other acta concilii remensis ad s basolum leonis legati epistola ad hugonum et robertum regs topic honors topic Postage stamps, France honored the Pope Sylvester II in 1964 by issuing a postage stamp. Hungary issued a commemorative stamp honoring Pope Sylvester II on 1 January 1938. Topic see also topic List of Roman Catholics Scientist clerics Barcelona's Astrolabe topic Notes topic topic References topic topic Citations topic topic Bibliography topic Boudou, John Davis 1941. The Origin of Our Numbers. The Scientific Monthly. 52 265-267. Bibcode, 1941 Simo, 265 d Darlington, Oscar G. Gerbert, The Teacher. American Historical Review. 52 456-476. doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 1859882. Kostalnik, Zoltan J. 1977. The Relations of Four Eleventh-Century Hungarian Kings with Rome in the Light of Papal Letters, Church History. 46 33 33-47. doi, 10.2307, 3165157. Louis L. 1898. Pope Sylvester II and Stephen I of Hungary. English Historical Review, 1350, 290-295. doi, 10.1093, EHR, 13, L.290. JSTOR 547228. Seif, Charles, 2000. Zero, The Biography of a Dangerous Idea. New York, Penguin Books. ISBN 0-678-8457-X. Tester, S. Jim A History of Western Astrology. Rochester, Boydell & Brewer. ISBN 0-85115-446-8. Further reading topic Brown, Nancy Marie. The Abacus and the Cross, The Story of the Pope Who Brought the Light of Science to the Dark Ages Basic Books, 2010, 310 pages, ISBN 9780465009503 Carrara, Bellino L'Opera Sissantifica di Gerberto o Papa Silvestro II Novelamente Discussa ed Illustrata in Italian. Rome, Tipografia Pontificia del Istituto Pio X. Pladeval i Font, Antony Silvestre II Gerbert de Orlhic in French. Barcelona, Colomé. ISBN 978-84-8300-514-9. A translation of the Letters of Gerbert 982-987 with introduction and notes, Harriet Pratt Latin, T.R., Columbus, Ohio, H. L. Hedrick, 1932. 
Letters of Gerbert, with his papal privileges as Sylvester II, translated with an introduction by Harriet Pratt Latin, Columbia University Press 1961, ISBN 0-231-02201-8 ISBN 9780231022019 The Peasant Boy Who Became Pope, Story of Gerbert, Harriet Pratt Latin, Henry Schumann, 1951. The Policy of Gerbert in the Election of Hugh Capet, 987, based on a study of his letters, Harriet Pratt Latin, Ohio State University, 1926. Montecchio, Luca 2011. Gerberto Dorilac. Silvestro II in Italian. Graf.it Edizioni. ISBN 978-88-97010-05-0. Lindgren, UTA Gerbert von Orlach und das Quadrivium, Unters, zur Bildung im Zetalter d. Ottenen in German. Wiesbaden, Franz Steiner Verlag. ISBN 978-3-515-02449-5. Alleris, Alexander Erves de Gerbert Pape sous le nom de Silvestre II. Collationes sur les manuscrits in French and Latin, Paris, Dumoulin. Charlig, Alain 2012. Un portrait de Gerbert d. Aurillac, inventor d. Un abac, utiliciteur presoche des chiffres arabes, et pape de l'an mil in French. Lausanne, PPUR Presses Polytechniques. ISBN 978-2-88074-944-6. Trout, E.R. 2012. Celestial Divination and Arabic Science in Twelfth-Century England, The History of Gerbert of Aurillac's Talking Head". Journal of the History of Ideas. 73 201–222. doi, 10.1353, jhi.2012.0016. External links Topic. Catholic Encyclopedia Betty Mayfield, "'Gerbert Dorillac and the March of Spain, A Convergence of Cultures'". Gerbert of Aurillac CA. Lecture by Lynn H. Nelson. Women's Biography, Adelaide of Burgundy, Ottonian Empress, includes four of his letters to Adelaide of Italy.